Hi, and welcome to my six week ukulele course for beginners. Here I will share with you my simple but very effective method that has helped me throughout my 30 year career as a professional guitarist and ukulele player and coach. This course is based on technique, which I believe is one of the main aspects when learning how to play any instrument. You will learn and develop good habits for your strumming, chord changes, chord shapes, and your sound. In this course, we will cover everything from how to buy, how to hold, and how to tune your ukulele right through to being able to play by the end of six weeks, uh, the song Hotel California by the Eagles. Now this course is designed to be easy. And if you're able to spend a few minutes each day working on the exercises, you'll be very surprised that you will pick this up very fast as well. Now, if you're unable to spend much time on your practicing, that's okay because you will always have these videos to go back, refresh and review and allow you to be able to move at your own pace. My name is Vic Kenner and I'm so excited to have this opportunity to help you on your ukulele journey. Now we have a lot of work to do, so let's get started. So, is it ukulele or ukulele? I enjoy using the word ukulele, but I still use ukulele sometimes as well. Um, yeah, so it's whatever is preferred for you. How to choose an ukulele that's right for you? Well, there's only a couple of areas you want to look at. Number one is how it sounds. And number two is how it feels. So how it sounds, for someone who doesn't know how to play, if you make your way into a music store that has a collection of ukulele that you can try, um, you'll get to be able to, even if you just hold it up, and just strum the strings, you get a sense of what type of tone it is. And the tones you're looking for is a nice, big, uh, warm sound, uh, as opposed to a thin sound. Uh, I, I can only go on what I like. So I, I love a nice, big, warm sound. And I can find out if the ukulele has that sound by simply playing across all the strings. Both our hands have different functions. So uh, one hand is used for strumming and the other is used to play chords. So tuck the body up against your chest um, or lower chest and with your strumming hand Tuck the base of the ukulele under your forearm. And with your hand, just hold the top part of the base and just try and get a comfortable feel. Find out where your comfort spot is uh, holding your ukulele. And then with the other hand, our chord hand, we place the neck in the V part in between our thumb and our first finger, uh, up by the headstock. This is our neck. Place it there, and then you can hold your neck up while it's tucked under your forearm and then you're able to strum across the strings. And I'm just using my thumb to do a downward strum. And the strum is across all the strings. Not hard, uh, probably a six out of 10. Six being medium, 10 being the hardest you can go, so not hard. Probably three or four strums and you'll get a sense of whether that's a good sound that suits you. If not, try another one and just go through until you find one that you're happy with the sound. Now for me that's probably the most important thing. The next step is, is how it feels to play. So there are a couple of things you can try. Uh, one in particular is to find out how much pressure you have to place down to play a chord. Now, I'm going to get you to do this in, in a store if you use your third finger. So we're going to go thumb. This is on your chord hand. Thumb, index finger is number one, middle finger is number two, ring finger is number three, and our pinky is number four. With your third finger, place it on the string closest to the floor. That's string number one. Here are our frets. One, two, three, and so on. Frets are the metal parts on the neck. 
Well, you've got to place your fingers just behind a fret when you're placing them on the neck. Well, we're interested in fret number three. So let's find out where that is. Number one, two, three. Okay, so we're going to place our third finger on the third fret. One, two, three. Of the first string, the one closest to the floor. Now we're almost finished. We have our thumb, which is placed behind the neck. Our thumb plays a very important role because our thumb is going to press against the back of the neck, allowing our fingers to press down on the string. And the firmer you press down with your finger, the cleaner and clearer the note's going to sound. If I didn't have much pressure on my third finger, I'm going to end up with a, yeah, a muted, dull sound. Not the sound we're after. Okay, that's a C chord, C for Charlie. Third finger, thumb, one, two, three. On the third fret, one, two, three. And you place it just behind the fret. Well, you can even place it sort of halfway in between, but what is preferred is just behind the fret and not actually on the fret. Another important thing when playing our chord is we have to use our fingertips. So let's go through that again. <laughs> third finger, third fret, one, two, three. First string, one closest to the floor. Thumb placed at the back, supporting our finger. And strum. That's our first chord. C. What we're trying to work out is how it feels. These strings are a certain distance. There is a little gap between the string and the fretboard. And if your strings are away, are too high or away from the fretboard, that means you're going to have to push down quite firmly, quite hard to get your fingertips up on that fretboard. And if you do, um, that's not a good thing. They call that the action. If the action, this hand is the strings and this is a fretboard. If the action is too high, I'm going to have to use a lot of strength to bring my fingers down to push up against that fretboard. So I don't want that. What you want, and you don't want them too close either, otherwise they'll end up uh, rattling against the frets, and that's not a nice sound either. So you want them just above the frets, um, where they're not too high, and that makes it a lot easier for you to press your fingers down to play your chords. The best way to hold your ukulele. There are two ways. Number one is to use a strap. What a strap does is it takes away all the worry of you trying to hold up your ukulele while you're strumming or playing chord shapes. All music stores that sell ukulele will be able to help you find the right strap and also help you install the posts that your strap attaches to. This is great for all beginners. However, if you don't have one, please don't panic, because here is the second way to hold your ukulele. Okay, so what we want to do is bring the body of the ukulele up against your chest. I like it on my lower chest. Some of you might prefer it high, but it's really where you feel comfortable. Now with your strumming hand, you want to tuck the base of the ukulele under your forearm. And then with your hand, hold it, hold the shoulder of the body. Now with your other hand, the hand you play your chords with, you're going to hold the neck up by the headstock. And you're just going to hold that position. And you're going to find out what is a comfortable place for you. There are a couple of things to remember when you're just starting out. Number one, is make sure the strings are always facing away from you. Some people like to look at their strings and so they turn their ukulele up toward them. And what that does is it puts strain 
on your forearm, your wrist, and your fingers of the hand that's playing your chords. And we don't want that. It's all about comfort. So that feels really good for me. So you need to find out where it's comfortable for you. Okay, how to tune our ukulele. Now the easiest way to do that is to use a clip-on ukulele tuner. And there's plenty around and all you do is you clip it onto the headstock of your ukulele. And you'll see a display window. Now, before I get into that, I'll let you know that the tuning for this ukulele, this is a tenor ukulele made by the um, beautiful craftsmanship of the company Kanalea in Hawaii. Um, this is the tenor. Now the tenor is tuned the same as the soprano in the concert ukulele and that is uh, the top string, string number four, the one closest to our chin is G. The next string, string number three, C. The next string, string number two is E. And string number one, closest to the floor is A. So G, C, E, A. Or, good children eat apples. Alright, let's go and tune them. Now to tune your ukulele, you have to use these um, tuning pegs. And they turn both ways. One way will make the pitch go higher and the other way will make the pitch go lower and so what the tuner does is it shows you where you should be tuning your string to what tension should it be looser um, or tighter and you can tell by the uh, the indicator moves into the center when the tuning is correct so we'll have a look and we'll tune string number one, or A. Now what I did right then, just to let you know, is there are different modes um, on the tuners. And I had to select the one that says U, which represents ukulele, uh, because it was set on guitar. And if it's set on a different instrument, it's probably one of the reasons why it won't register the string, and that's what happened here. It didn't register the string, so let's have a look. This should be in the middle. We're going to tune string number one, which is A. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then we'll go to string number two, E. I'll let you have a look. Indicator moving into the center. I hope you can see this. String number three. Oh, that's very close. It was just under. C. It's looking okay. And string number four. I will also explain that my ukulele has two G strings. So string number four is G. And I've got two of them. One is low and the other is high. So I'm just going to go with the high one because the ukulele setting on the tuner will pick up the high string. Now that's looking good. So G, string number four. C, string number three. E, string number two. And A, string number one. How to tune our ukulele and that is the simplest way to tune our ukulele strumming tips for beginners number one our thumb down Our thumb and index finger. Down, up, 
down, up, down, up. Number four, our thumb and first finger press together. Down, up, down, up, down, up. And number five, using a pick. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Find out which one suits you. I prefer using number two, my index finger. Now when strumming, the objective is to make sure you go across all the strings nice and evenly. Both on your downstroke and your upstroke. There's a little bit of arm movement, but the majority of the work is coming from a little rolling of your wrist. You just want to make sure you're nice and relaxed. Your actions, that's what you're working toward. Just to be nice and relaxed. So how do you practice that? While you're watching TV? Just going through the motion. And this will help you get started to becoming a really great strumming ukulele player. What is a chord diagram? A chord diagram is a great way to show us all how to play chord shapes. The diagram represents the neck, the strings, and the frets. It also indicates where we place our fingers and which fingers to use. When you look at a chord diagram, it is represented with the ukulele neck facing upright like this. And how you read it is as if you were holding your ukulele out in front facing toward you. Each vertical line represents a string. So we'll start with the first string. So here you will see on the diagram this string known as the first string or the one closest to the floor. I will note that this diagram is for right-handed players. However, I do have a video for left-handed players. A. And the string beside that. String number two. E. And the line beside that. String number three. C. And the line on the far side, G, or string number four. Now let's have a look at the frets. We'll begin with the nut, which is represented with a thicker line at the top of the diagram. And then you have our frets, which are thinner lines, the horizontal lines. Our frets are numbered. And we start with number one, two, three, four, and so on. We're just going to concentrate on the first four. When you place your finger on a fret, you don't place it directly on the fret. You place it just behind. When you press your finger down, make sure you use your thumb behind the neck and use your fingertip. Now our fingers on our chord hand are numbered. We have our thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger, and fourth finger. So thumb, one, two, three, four. And once again, our strings are numbered. One, two, three, four. And our frets are numbered. One, two, three, four, and so on. 
This is how we communicate through that chord diagram. So now we're going to learn how to play our first chord using the diagram. So we're going to start with a C chord, which uses our third finger, and the dot is on the third fret of the first strings. Now let's do it as if I were holding my ukulele normally. Thumb behind the neck, finger number three, third fret, one, two, three, just behind the fret itself, pressed onto the first string. So let's have a look at another chord, A minor. Here we can see the dot is now on the second fret, and we're now going to use finger number two, and it is on the fourth string. So don't forget to use your fingertip. Place our second finger on the fourth string of the second fret. And I'm just going to do one strum down with my thumb, A minor. So let's have a look at another chord, F. So you may notice that finger number two is in the same place as it was when playing A minor. Only difference is now we have to add our first finger, index finger, to the second string of the first fret. So let's do that. Play our F chord. So I'm getting a nice, clean, clear sound there. Last chord for today is uh, G7. So let's have a look and see how we can play a G7. So in the diagram, we have to place our second finger on the third string of the second fret. And then our first finger on the second string of the first fret. So here's something a little tricky. We've got to place our third finger on the second fret of the first string. What I do to help me um, play that chord shape, I tilt my hand away from the neck slightly, and that gives me more room to place my third finger, and that's a G7. And then we'll go back to C. Third finger, first string, third fret. Okay, so working with a metronome. A metronome is a fantastic tool to help you get used to staying in time and help you really uh, be able to control your strumming hand and your chord changes. And uh, the metronome is fantastic for that. So I'm going to show you how to get started using a metronome. And the easiest way to find one is just by searching on uh, either your phone or your tablet I've just searched uh, the word metronome and then one comes up automatically and um, it looks like this. So it's set for 100 beats per minute and you'll notice there's a minus and a plus sign and also a slider. And what they do is they uh, help you change the speed. So the higher the number the faster the speed and what I'm going to suggest we do is we go down to 50 beats per minute and I'll let you see what that sounds like so working with a metronome the best thing you can do is just let it play for a few beats one two three four start again one two three four so i'm really getting used to the timing of that metronome you can tap your feet in time with it nod your head or even tap your ukulele and see if you can stay in time That's pretty good. 
So when you're on your own, grab your phone, grab your metronome, set it for 50 beats per minute, and see how long you can stay in time for. The longer, the better. So if you can only stay in time for it, for um, like a few counts, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and you find yourself drifting off, that's okay. The idea is to stop, reset, and start again. And try and maintain your timing in time at the metronome for as long as you can. 30 seconds, anything over 30 seconds, you've definitely got control of that timing. Uh, I found that counting in time with the metronome was a really easy way to connect. So we'll try that. I'm going to start it. Now don't try and count straight away. Let it play so that you can get the rhythm and the momentum of that tempo. 50 beats per minute. Once you think you've got it, start counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, and so on. So your exercise is to practice counting at 50 beats per minute along with your metronome. So why is a metronome good? What we're going to do now is we're going to play a C chord. Third finger, third fret, not on the wire remember, just back using your fingertip and making sure your thumb is supporting your finger by allowing it to press down on the string. So, third finger, first string, third fret. And we want to practice our strumming. So with our strumming, across all the strings, remember, holding a C chord. And we're going to do this to the beat of 50 beats per minute using our metronome. So get yourself ready. Find your C chord. Work out what you're going to use to strum. I'm going to use my index finger. And let that beat play so you can get used to it before you start strumming or counting. So I'm going to count two bars of four and then we'll start strumming. And we always start with a down stroke. One, two, three, four. And again, one, two, three, four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You can count along too if you can. Now what we're doing here is we want to make sure that we're strumming across all the strings on both our down and up stroke. And we want to strum in time with our ukulele, um, with our metronome. Now if you're finding that you're uh, moving out of time, that's okay. Remember, just pause, reset, and start again. And stop there. Very good. So that was us with our um, metronome helping us get used to our strumming. And it's all about creating a really good, strong, controlled strumming pattern with our right hand. And we do that by just not even to concentrate on chord changes. We just want to hold one chord down. So we just want to concentrate on staying in time and getting our strumming right. Now we can, once we get used to that and we can hold our strum in time with our metronome for, let's say 30 seconds, 
then it might be time to move to another chord. So we're going to go from C for two bars of eight, uh, two bars of four, and then move to A minor for two bars or four as well. I'll give you an example. Using a metronome, 50 beats per minute. One, two, three, four. So C, down straight, two, three, four. And again, one, two, three. Now moving to A minor. One, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. And back to C. And there you have it. Now we have two chords that we can strum along to and practice over the course of the next few days. And hopefully 50 beats per minute isn't too fast for you to be able to strum comfortably in time, down, up, and make that chord change so that you stay in time as well. But that gives you something to practice. Now, once you're familiar with that, we're going to put the chord F in the equation now. So we're going to go C for two bars, A minor for two bars, and two bars means counting two lots of four. Four beats in one bar, so two bars is two lots of four. Two bars of C, two bars of A minor, and the next chord we're going to introduce is two bars of F. All right, let's go. 50 beats per minute, getting used to that metronome, uh, the tempo of it. Now, you also want to have a little bit of a uh, quick refresher on what your chords are. C, A minor, F, using two fingers. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, and again. One, two, three. Four C downstroke one, two, three, four again one, two, three, four A minor one, two, three, four again one, two, three, four to an F add your first finger to the A minor so you got two fingers down and again one, two, three, four back to C. One, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three. Coming up to A minor, A minor. One, two, three, four. And again, one, two, three. To an F. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And back to C. One. Two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. And we'll stop there. How'd you go? I hope you went really well. And if you didn't, that's okay. Because this is a, a work in progress. And the best way to improve is by repetition. Now, if the speed is too fast, then you you can slow it down to maybe 40 beats per, per minute and see if you're able to stay in time and keep up at that speed. But if you're okay with that, then we'll move on to the last chord that we will learn um, for today's lesson. And, and that is our G7. Three fingers on the ukulele fretboard to play a G7. Now here's what I do. So we have C, third finger, third fret, first string, A minor, second finger, second fret, fourth string, F, keep your A minor chord and add your first finger to the first string 
uh, sorry, to the first fret of the second string. That's our F. Now G7, here's how I play my G7. I move, I keep my first finger where it is. And then I move my second finger down to the third string on the same fret, fret number two. Then I turn my hand away from the ukulele neck. And what that does is it gives me more room to be able to put my third finger down on the second fret of the first string. So I'll do that again. F. Now, second finger down. And at the same time, I'm going to turn my the palm of my hand away from my neck. I'll do that one more time. Then I can place a lot easier my third finger on the second fret of the first string and play my G7. I'll do that one more time for you. F, G7, down comes the second finger, away goes the palm of the hand, and down comes the third finger. Back, F, G7. Now I suggest when you practice your G7 chord, this is how you should do it. Play your F chord and then play your G7 chord. Now notice, I am placing my fingers down on the strings at the same time. So you may as well try and do that as well. Try and get that good habit in right away. F, G7, and then we'll go back to C. So now we've got four chords that we're going to play using our metronome, 50 beats per minute. Two bars of C, two bars of A minor, two bars of F, and two bars of G7. And then back to C again. Let's see how we go. Getting used to that tempo. And we'll start counting. One, two, three. Four. And again, one, two, three. Now here we go, C. One, two, three, four. And again, one, two, three, four. A minor, one, two, three, four. And again, one, two, three. To an F. G7, 1, 2, 3, 4, again, 1, 2, 3, back to C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, A minor, 1, 2, 3, 4, and again, 1, 2, 3, to an F. go G7 start moving your hand now one two three four and again one two three back to C one and there you have it the beginning of our ukulele journey playing four great starter chords and go in from C, A minor, F, and G7. One of the hardest chords uh, when first starting to learn how to play. So you need to spend a little bit of time just going from F to G7. And just do one strum. Just use this as a practice. And spend maybe two minutes on it. And the more you practice that, the easier it's going to get. Well, that's the end of lesson one, and I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. If you have any questions or you're uh, struggling with anything, please don't hesitate to contact me. All my details are in the description. If you like the video, I invite you to please share, uh, please subscribe, and please hit the notification button so that you can stay 
in touch with the uh, following videos that are coming up. So thank you once again. My name is Vic Kenner and I really hope you enjoyed yourself today and look forward to seeing you at the next lesson. Then I can place a lot comfortabler, then I can place a lot easier. <laughs>